Good day everyone, this is an update or a quick tip or whatever you want to call it on powder coating. Um, just something, uh, I've been doing a bit of powder coating the last few days and it's just something that um, I've sort of changed I guess you could say or an option uh, that you could that you could do. Um, in the past I've, talk, I've, I've spoken about the, um, the, the candy finishes and just for those that don't know how to do a candy finish, basically you've got to do a chrome finish underneath which is just powder coat again. It's just a chrome, not actual chrome, it's powder coat that has a chrome colour or a silver or something like that um, underneath which will disguise all the imperfections on the actual enclosure, enclosure because if you look at a bare enclosure and I'll just grab one now like this you'll see that um, there is a lot of crap and scratches and marks and all sorts of stuff and um, actually while we're looking at this one you can see one thing I really don't like about these Tadar 1590A's is this bloody groove that goes around the top there very annoying um, you can't get rid of that but uh, but what we what I'm referring to here is the texture that is on the um, enclosure so you need to powder coat over that first with a chrome which will disguise all that sort of stuff and then you put basically the candy is just a um, a clear coat that has a tint so in this case it's blue it's a clear coat with a blue tint which gives it that which makes it look like a candy finish the problem with doing two coats on a guitar pedal is that you have the rim around the inside, particularly on a 1590A. It's funny that it just actually just reminded me as I picked this up. Um, when you add two coats um, of candy, uh, of powder coat in between um, these layers, um, the lid can get difficult to fit onto it. It can get stuck on um, because it's just, it just becomes such a tight fit. Um, the, the the powder coat adds a, a, a bit of a profile to um, uh, to the outside of the enclosure and, and it, you just end up having to jam it on and it just sucks to be honest um, and you can't you can't just chip away at the powder coat on the inside um, of the of the lip um, of the of the lid you can't just chip away at it because you kind of introduce a weak point into the powder coating and then it will just continue to chip. Um, that's not how powder coating works, it's not like paint where you can just sand it off here or, or you know, chip it off there and it'll be okay. Um, when you do that with powder coating, it's, it's not advised to do that with powder coating. So how can you do a single coat on an enclosure without uh, a candy finish without, without doing two coats and having, having those other problems? There's, there are ways of getting around doing um, a uh, of having that um, that thickness uh, around the lip of uh, the lid and, and the lip of the um, of the enclosure. Uh, there's people that there's ways that people do it. Um, there, it's a bit of stuffing around personally, I think, and I um, don't really want to do that. I just want to I just want to paint it in one hit and be done with it. So the way that I've sort of come up with, I guess you could say, has its own issues, um, and it's kind of blindingly obvious is to just put a candy coat straight over the top. You can see all those imperfections. To be, to be honest, I don't, actually, I don't actually find them that unattractive. You can really see in the video like they stand out really, really quite obvious. Um, in fact, I'm looking at, looking at it in the video and then looking at it in person and thinking to myself, why is it coming up so obvious on the video? Like they're just like dark patches pretty much. Um, you can still see them in person, but they're just not. The, the contrast isn't as obvious um, between the, um, the candy colour and, um, and the enclosure imperfections. But uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, even, I still don't find it that um, unappealing. I still think it looks pretty good. Um, the durability is still a question mark as, if, uh, as, as just having that one um, candy uh, coat on the bare enclosure. Is it going to stand? Is it going to weather? And... I think that it probably it probably will um, because generally they say with finishing that your your finish is only as tough as your weakest layer so you're already putting the blue candy on the the candy finish anyway so if it's going to chip on here it's probably going to chip on there but 
I'm not sure about that though. It may be a little bit less um, durable. Another way to get rid of um, those imperfections on the um, enclosure is to give it a light sand. This was a very light sand, um, but you could almost remove all those imperfections if you gave it. You hit it with a belt sander. Um, on this one, I gave it a light sand and it was actually a rough sand. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see um, sorry for the extreme close-up of my face. I don't mean to disturb you in any way. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see that. There we go. See that sort of, um, the sand marks. It actually gives it a bit of a brush look. And if you actually did it carefully, not in a rush like I did, um, you could actually make that to look pretty cool. So that's one way that you can do a candy finish without doing multiple layers. I actually know somebody that actually does this um, on their petals. Um, which they sell, so that durability thing's probably fine. Um, I know that I know that he uses it. His name's actually Darren. He's a um, he's a a forum buddy, um, and he's also a, a fellow Melbourneite from Australia. And his pedals, if you want to look him up, is Dazatronics. And um, he's mentioned this method a million times, so I don't mind sharing it with you guys. I'm sure he doesn't care me saying it. He does a few other little extra bits and pieces, um, but yeah. The point that I'm trying to make is he does just a single click a, a candy coat over the top and doesn't have a problem with it. Um, also, just with the whole uh, with the whole thickness thing, um, this is two coats without a clear coat over the top. So if you're going to put a decal on that, it's going to get even thicker. In fact, it'd probably get so thick, I reckon you'd have trouble putting that back plate on. You can already see that there's a gap there from the um, powder coat pushing pushing the lid off. Um, so it does happen, and with a, oh, I might as well just keep going on. If you're still, if you're still watching, <laughs> you're interested in this stuff. So I'll just keep, I'll just keep talking. You won't be able to shut me up. Uh, I'll just grab another enclosure. This is the Granny Smith enclosure that I did. The color is Granny Smith, and I added the um, that sparkle to it, which looks friggin' awesome. Um, but that's two coats, and this one has issues with the lid fitting on it. It's, it's, I packed it on. I think I went a little overboard with the um, powder on this one. But again, that's two coats. You've got the Granny Smith dormant color underneath, and then you put the clear coat over the top, and it, and it starts to sparkle. Um, and then you've got to put your decal on, and then you've got to clear coat it. And again, you're going to have the problem with the lid sitting on it. So I'm not sure how you can do that um, with a dormant... Um, yet I haven't worked out a way to do that yet because with a dormant you've got to put the clear coat over the top and you might sort of think well you can just put the um, the laser uh, the, the laser jet decal um, on the dormant and then clear coat over that but um, usually with two coats I've found it's much better to hot flock it which uh, I mentioned in the in the other powder coating video is basically you do the dormant you pull it out of the oven and then you just go bang and hit it with the clear coat and the clear coat sticks to it straight away. I found that's usually um, a better way to, um, to do, to do two, any really any two layer um, uh, powder coating job. The reason is for deflection but I'm not going to go into that. It's base, uh, how, do I, how do I sum it up? It's basically when you put the first layer of, of powder coat on, you've added insulation to the to the enclosure, and the enclosure is shielded. And when you spray the next the next um, uh, coating on it, it will actually deflect, which means it won't stick properly to the enclosure because it's got that extra layer of insulation on it. Some powder coating guns have two settings on it where you can crank up the voltage for the second um, the second coat, which is which is really what you want. But that's a professional setup, and my my cheap ass powder coating gun doesn't do that so that's just a um yeah a few more details on powder coating I'm, I'm always trying to refine the process getting better at it i think um I, I did i managed to do about five enclosures um last night in about an hour and a half or two hours probably about two hours including the cleanup um, which for me is a good day um, and yeah it's coming up pretty good you know only tiny imperfection i've got on that one is that I get the occasional bump on the top too. Um, I don't know. You've got to get it again. You've got to get it in the right lighting. But I get the occasional bump on the top too. But I just think that that's for probably from my garage not being a very sterile environment. 
Anyway, hope you liked that and um, yeah, it helped you out if you're doing powder coating or if you're thinking about doing powder coating, it might help you get your head around how these layers actually work because it's quite confusing, particularly when you're ordering the powder, you just all these options and you just don't know, you know, what do I need for this and that and you know, all that sort of business. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself guitar pedal tutorials, demos and videos. Thanks for watching.